Alcatraz Agogo, proud sponsors of Cage Fighter. Welcome to Cage Fighter, and today I'm not alone. I'm with my good old mate, Granite Grant Walkman. David. Now, Grant, every time I ask for champions, I ask for guys, big guys, but today mm. I want a guy who never says no. You're right, Dave. This is the show that's all go, oh. and I've got someone today who's <laughs> who never says always no. <laughs> ready to go. Yeah, uh, it's Richard the Myth Griffin. Richard. Hey, Jim, hey, hey, right. hey, anyway. I mean, me and Rich go way, way back. I mean, Richard. By the time you walked in my gym years ago, you yeah. were a fantastic striker. You loved the ground, and all you've done is got better and better. Yeah. I mean, wh where are you training at now? Um, at the moment, um, I'm at Trojans Fight Club um, down in Heather Green Lane. Um, great bunch of people down there. We're training really hard at the moment. We've had quite a lot of um, equipment in there, so. Yeah, listen, I've been really down there. I mean, yeah. we've been down. We've had a couple of uh, cage fighter shows down there. And Julius France is a boxing coach down there. He's helping all the guys out there. It is huge. I mean, back in the day, you had a little tiny room. Yeah. Now you've got like a, a hangar. <laughs> they got, they got the biggest set of um, kettlebells I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, don't definitely. They? Rows and rows of kettlebells, <laughs> which, uh, you know, is... Is a bread and butter, isn't it, of, uh, yeah, it of core is. training, strength. You do a lot of strength and conditioning down there, you've got all the yeah, ropes. Definitely. I mean, like, I find that it's really important. We need that explosive strength, so definitely we've got to do a lot of core training to make sure that we can't be thrown about. And, you know, definitely it's a good part of um, the training. I think that this is one thing, you know, even now, I'm not, I think the, the UK is really catching up with the rest of the world, especially America, uh, with regards to. Uh, the standard of fighters and we're, high level gyms. Yeah, we're, we're seeing it in the um, in the UFC and other shows now. You know, uh, our guys really are at the top level, but training is is where we have been lacking, isn't it? Yeah. Um, not so much the athletes, but the training for wrestling, strength conditioning, etc., etc. And now we are catching up that side of it. Now we're producing some serious fighters. It's all about facilities. Have you got the facilities you train? which now you guys have. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I was down there, I couldn't believe it. I thought, back in the day, if we had this kind of gym, yeah. we'd be producing world-class athletes. Exactly. But you yeah. know what? Let's have a look at Richard going against yeah. Mr. Walcott. This is Richard DeMiff Griffin. Hi, my name's Chris Walcott. I'm fighting out at the Semtex gym. I'm Richard DeMiff Griffin. I'm from South East London. I train out at Band Dogs. I've cut weight, I've trained hard for this fight and I'm ready for you Richard Griffin. Chris, I've been training for this fight for a little while. You have my respect but I'll show you no mercy in a cage. At the end of the day, I'm not bothered about you. As soon as you step in the ring, you're my enemy and that's all I've got to say. Rob, the last time we saw Griffin fight, we actually saw a win and he showed the same resilience, didn't he? That's right, his resilience is fantastic. You can look at the uh, slow-mo, you can see. This is where Griffin found himself in trouble, trying to fight his way to his feet. But that was beautiful, hoisting his man up, and as you said, Pierre, took him to his own corner. Very tactically smart, strategically aware. Smart move by Griffin. And, and this was the armbar. Beautiful, beautiful armbar. And that would make most men tap, wouldn't it, Pierre? That was a textbook submission. And, I, and I'm looking now and I still don't know how Griffin did not tap out. I mean, everything was secure. Walcott did everything correct. However, the heart of Griffin shows right there. And this is really where you expect to see Griffin burst into energy. Big right hands, he's throwing. Walcott attempted another takedown. However, it was ineffective as Griffin is still in the top position. However, Griffin's knees are bent. He's got to be careful because Walcott's going to grab it and he's going to take him down. Nice sprawl. Uh, Griffin, Griffin working to possibly take his back. Now Toby Amata made the reverse triangle famous, and uh, I think well Griffin did have a possible setup. However, he's opted to go for the rear naked choke, and it's on. It's the Griffin victory by rear naked choke, and you can see what that means to Richard Griffin. I've had the opportunity to talk to Boss Root, who said he lost his first seven fights. But after he started in the win column, he said his confidence grew and he actually became a better fighter. 
Were you shocked at this rear naked so quickly from him? To be honest with you, you're kind of surprised because he didn't even look to set the hooks in. He literally just saw the neck and went straight for the neck. So in that respect, he was lucky that Walcott did have some time and was, was not unable to defend it. And here it is, and he taps me. As you said, it was, it was almost effortless, Pierre. Well, I think the thing was the cardio, the actual fitness that let him down right there. Because again, he did not have his hooks set in. So it might have been that that caused him to tap. So there you go, it just proves that Richard is not just a striker, not a knockout merchant, he can submit people. A rear naked choke there, absolutely lovely. And Chris Walcott, well-rounded guy. Do you know, if you're not uh, capable in all areas nowadays, you, you're in the wrong game, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, like, I've found um, back in the day when I first started, I took a lot of um, fights in the heat at the moment and I found that I was trying to rely on one thing a lot of the time, but now obviously I've um, I'm experienced a bit more and like I've learned that you definitely need to have a well-rounded game to survive in this course, game. Of course, I mean, yeah. you fought guys like John Hathaway, who's in the UFC now. It must be so <laughs> gutting to think, I fought that guy, I lost, and that guy now has just moved. And it's, you, sometimes you're one fight away from just jumping to the next level, and he's doing really well in the UFC. He is, but he, he's a guy, you know, we, we could uh, mention, you fought a middleweight, I think that fight, you, you fought John Hathaway at middleweight? I think I fought him at a catchweight in that fight. Catchweight, yeah. uh, but it was heavier than you normally fight. Yeah, at. definitely. You, you're well to weight now. Yeah. Um, but look at the size of John Hathaway and the amount of weight he cuts. Definitely. He's twice your size, isn't he? He is really, So really it's going to make a difference. <laughs> we can look at a couple of guys in a minute with a knockout of the week and they're middleweights and they walk around at like 94 kilos, jump back yeah. in the cage at 94. So it would be no good for you now going to middleweight. I mean, no, really, as you all. said before, Lightweight's your next Lightweight. step. Lightweight, yeah, definitely. Well, it's funny, the guy you're fighting December the 1st, Paul Tellies Kellys. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Tellies, because he, he walks around like he's carrying two tellies, that's why they call him yeah. Tellies Kellys. Just for you people who didn't know that. That's what it's all about, <laughs> Tellies Kellys. <laughs> but Paul uh, spent his, most of his career at lightweight. Yeah. But he was sick of cutting weight. <laughs> he said, I'm so sick of it, let yeah. me come back and have a weight fight. And the one guy in the country said, I'll fight him. Is Richard a bit for it again? <laughs> That's it, man. At the end of the day, you've got to look at it as as it is. I'm not afraid to fight anybody. I don't care who they are. I don't care where they've been. At the end of the day, it's about me and me getting better. And how am I going to get better unless fight I fight the best? Me? Exactly. I like yeah. him already. Go on. What are you fighting for? Got to raise Shut up, game. London. I love him. Well, I tell you what's interesting. You, you, <laughs> did you? You had your first fight on my show, didn't you? Back in two thousand and four. Yeah, when I fought um, what's his name, Snedden. So there you go. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> it's always right. I remember him taking down there, a long drive down there. Come on, Richard. Let's go and bash someone up down there. There you go. But listen, let's have a look at the middleweight guys I was on about. And this is awesome. Ben Callum taking on Charlie Langdon. Let's get it on. Name's Ben Callum, fighting at our Kettles gym. I'm back and I'm ready to bang. Uh, hello, my name's Charlie Langdon. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Bournemouth, fighting at a Team Jedi MMA. Been training hard for this fight. I always train hard. It's what I do all the time. Hard work, dedication. Uh, I've been training very hard, going to the gym twice a day, running a lot. Just had to cut the weight, really. I'm a lot bigger and faster now. Well, faster anyway. OK, firstly, I want to thank you guys for all spending your money coming out to watch this fight. It's going to be another explosive show. It's an always an explosive show when Ben Callum fights. Looking for another knockout tonight. Hopefully, it should be over quickly. Um, I bet you strained hard as well. Good luck on your fight, and I'll meet you in the cage. Well, Langdon with his hands down, needs to be careful. Good knee to the body from Langdon. Straight into the clinch. He's got to keep those hands off. Oh, Langdon. Oh, oh he's dropped. Langdon's been he's dropped. Out. Said he's he's out. out. He is out. He's out. It's over. He's not quite with it, Langdon. Wow. Langdon was throwing shots of his own, but Ben Callum, super, super strong, gets the knockout. Langdon looking to, the, to his corner, he's not quite sure why it's been stopped. And we talked about great middleweights, we've seen a lot of them tonight. Ben Callum is a handful for anybody to deal with at this weight. He caught a shot to the nose, Davey. Look at Callum, he's being treated at the moment. We see the replay of that frantic round. Oh, there's the shot that caught him on the nose. Yeah, Langdon actually caught him coming in quite nicely. But then the knees came in. Take nothing from Langdon, he was game. He stood there and banged, but he caught oh, that short left, left hook. <laughs> dropped him. Referee came in, have a closer look at that. Oh, she Sherry made a very Brooke, good stop. Fantastic. Stuff. I'm impressed with her tonight. She's done some great refereeing. Good stoppage. With this wild exchange that Callum came forward, 
We see in the second, there it is, that clipping left hook. Now that is what I'm talking about, Grant. I mean, Ben Callum is ferocious. But as you say, it ain't no good being middleweight when you're fighting guys like Ben Callum. I mean, he's six foot whatever. Whatever. And he, yeah. <laughs> he's out here. Huge. And he yeah. takes on Jason Radcliffe in December. Again, he's fighting alongside you. That is going to be an awesome fight. That Absolutely. will be good. Awesome yeah. Should be a great card, definitely. Yeah. I can't wait. Neil Grove, Ben Callum, Richard DeMuth, <laughs> Telly's Kellys. <laughs> it's all going off. We'll see you straight after the break. Listen, every week I get all these emails saying, why do you keep hitting Grant? Because he's just hittable. You just want to want to dig him and punch him. You're lucky your mate ain't here this week, Ian Freeman. Well, talking of Ian Freeman, I'll tell you what, let's go and see what Ian Freeman has got to say about our mate Richard Griffin. Richard Griffin. Now, what can I say about this man? He's just come back from the Dominican Republic and beaten the one and only, the UFC fighter, Ross Poynton. He submitted him. And this is a man who prefers to stand up. Now he could be facing Paul Kelly, another UFC fighter. Could he make it two in a row? Well, if he can, I'm going to give him seven out of ten. Thanks for your kind words, Ian. Um, thanks again for all the kind words. But at the end of the day, come December, I'm going to prove to everybody what I'm really about. At the end of the day, you've only seen snippets of what I'm able to do. Only and now snippets. And now you're going to see the real deal, mate. The real deal? Snippets? I like it. What are we in for? Well, I mean, Ian mentioned there, D uh, Dominican Republic. We haven't really got the footage, you know, y you can look on, on the internet, it's all on there. Yeah. But it wasn't good enough quality to go on Sky. But what a fight. You went out there, we all had a great holiday out yeah. there. It was amazing. What you are you speak saying? for yourself, it was work. <laughs> it was work. <laughs> Eight with days a little, with a little bit of fighting. Yeah, but, I mean, Richard, out there, you went out there, I think you were, I, I personally think it was Ross's weight cut. I think yeah. you tried to cut too much weight. You looked like you was at, on holiday. Yeah. I just thought, I'll have a little fight when I'm out there. Well, How did you feel? What was going into that fight? Well, the flight and everything like that was like kind of nerve-wracking, to be honest with you, because you're, like, you're on the same plane and <laughs> like, you're seeing the person you're going to be fighting. So it was a little bit surreal, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean, in that sort of sense. But as soon as I saw the ring and I saw everything and I saw the preparation, it, that goes out of the window and you just feel like, you know, this is fight time, I've got to deal with what I've got to deal with. So in the mornings, I woke up, went to the gym, Usual stuff, just made sure I was ready, made sure everything was shot, and that was it. Well, you really impressed me. On the pads over in uh, Dominica, they're a lovely gym. I mean, big John McCarthy was there, yeah. Danny Beaver was your pad man, everybody. Yeah. It was really like a good family out there, but you was on it non-stop, yeah. in the gym, smash, smash, where Ross was trying to cut weight, and that's the difference sometimes. You know? and, he, and he had to cut a lot of weight as yeah, well. Yeah, cut a lot of weight. He spent most of his time in the sauna, laying there, trying to run, trying, and sometimes thinking too much weight cut can yeah. mess with your mind. And he even said that, can mess with your mind. Well, uh, you talk about mind, mental preparation. One thing I've noticed about you is there seem, you seem to be sort of reborn. There's a new confidence about you. Yeah. When you fought before, you turn up very, very quiet, yeah. sort of head down, go and sit, you know, wherever you're going to be, you know, Richard... You know, like, where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's over there, sat in the corner. Now you're coming along. You know, yeah. when you're going to win a fight, you've got to own the place, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to turn up. As, as, well, exactly you've got to be the boss. And in a Dominican, you turned up and yeah, you I were the boss, weren't you? It was. I knew that it was everything on the Michael line. I had to, I had to deal with it. it. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah. I think normally, like. You leave out in the morning, you've got the family around you, you go down to, to the, um, get ready for the fight and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a normal day and then you go and fight. But that time it wasn't a normal day. There was nothing normal about it. The situation was so no, different. No, it wasn't normal because he was in casino going, I can't lose. He was going 500 on red, 500 on black. And, and it, kept, it kept coming up going, I've got my... But we had to try and tell him, don't work like that, <laughs> Richard, stop it. <laughs> anyway, let's have a quick look at one of your teammates, Ro Big Barry Ryan, in White Collar of the Week. Check this guy out. Barry oh, scrapped that well. Yeah. This hits into full map. Let's see if we can finish it within the melt position. He's been there for a while now. Throughout the whole three rounds. What do you think, H? Um, it's been a good fight, but I'd like to see more aggression from Barry Ryan. For me, he's just sitting on top of his opponent. Now, I'm not a, one to knock the wrestling style, but to wrestle and work is what I like to see, not just sitting there and not doing much. You know, but, you know, when you see it standing up, Haji's giving it, he's always a stand up fighter, so I'd like to see it standing up. 
Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, obviously, the pace has to obviously be kept high, especially in the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu. When you're on the floor game, it's always got to be high. High impact, fast pace, and pick your shot. I'd love to see uh, both of these fight have a rematch in a K1 fight. Yeah, I think Harjeet would very much like that. Um, obviously, he hasn't been able to show any of his stand-up skills. Um, and that possibly could be uh, something to look forward to at uh, the next UC MMA. Don't forget, guys, tonight's event is sponsored by Iron Gym. Yeah, these guys have got great products. That guy could be going all the way, Richard. I don't know where you get these guys at Trojan. I yeah. mean, you've got a lot of guys fighting this weekend at White Collar. Yeah. Barry's fighting again. This is where the up-and-comers come, mate. I can't wait for the show this Saturday. I mean, White Collar is the place the, to be, Quan. The, the standard now, if you go back even just 10 years, I mean, at MMA, the UFC has only been around since, uh, officially since 93. 1993. Um, it's not that long, you know, as a sport. But the, if you go back 10 years in this country, the standard of the fighters now, the guys who are fighting on, uh, or some of the fighters who are fighting on White Collar, <laughs> uh, they would be dominating the sport <laughs> 10 years ago. Now, you've got to be so good now to, to shine it's just unbelievable. You've got to remember, a lot of the guys are starting at 14, 12 years old. Yeah. And we had a guy, I think, from Jimmy's camp who was 16 at White Collar. Yeah. I mean, what's he going to be like at 20? What's he going to be like at 18? Well, if you're look, even the youngsters, the kids sort of um, eight, eight to 10 years old doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they're That's so it. flexible. They're, they're like little worms wriggling about, aren't they? I'm getting yeah. excited. And if you want excitement, <laughs> this is the place to be. And this guy is excited. This is Simeon takes on Richard the Myth. Griffin. I'm fighting a guy called Simeon, don't know much about him. I've been training really hard for this fight, so it's going to be a good show. My name is Simeon, I'm 23 years old, I'm coming from Bulgaria and I'm fighting for London Shoot Fighters. Tonight I'm fighting QK1, Mr. Griffin, good luck tonight. My name is Richard Demith Griffin, I'm fighting out of Band Dogs and I'm from South East London. Now you see the replay here. You got, um, excuse me, you got Richard Griffin doing the plow to the knee. Now watch this here. The inside fight, dirty boxing by both guys. Clinch, clinch, body, body hit. The action was a zero to a hundred in like six seconds. Now look at this guy. He's measuring him up, getting the distance. Nice knee, good clinch, but Griffin is returning just as much as he gets. And I tell you what, this is probably one of the most exciting fights here. Spinning back kick. Wow. And then here it comes, Rob, the big knee after these heavy punches. This is superb work. From was both. it the knee that dropped him? I thought it was a left hook. Richard, both guys throwing leg kicks and punches. He slips the punch, maybe a small right hook back of the head. However, it, that actually continues. Kick to the inside, excuse me, kick to the ribs. Wobbled again by Simeon. However, Griffin still on the feet. A barrage left and right, both fighters. Now watch this here. I believe this is the punch he catches him. He comes up and over, off of a miss, Simeon there. punch. That's the, 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 the right hand, he's just beginning to get sloppy. Now the, the thing is... And there right it there. is, that big right, beautiful shot. You know what guys, I, also, I, I almost don't want this fight to end. This is fight of the night so far, this is wonderful. Without a doubt. Now guys, check it out. They are using, I want to reiterate, they are using the four ounce gloves. And they're still not able to seal the deal, and they're throwing bombs. This just, you know, it's just a testament to the, the, the fortitude of their chins. Both guys throwing tight little knees inside. And do you know why Grant's letting it go? Because they're not clinching. They're throwing the knees from range as well. It's not just about the clinch. Three of those four knees came from distance. Beautiful work by both fighters. And this is where a majority of the fight's been, and a majority of the skill is showing itself. Beautiful work by both men. Guys, I'm sorry, I, I'm getting lost here. My commentary just shuts down because I'm just watching this action. This is a beautiful, beautiful fight. This the is what, oh my God. The difference in this round is one of the men needs to find that little gap, that little bit of range to land that clean shot again. At the moment, the dirty boxing's dominating, but you need that little bit of space, that one shot, that uppercut or hook that can change us the round. When it's fought at this range, both men are able to take those shots. Do you know what, though, Malcolm? I think both guys know if they stretch that six inches back, both men are at, at, in a position to be KO'd. Guys, here's the thing. When you're in a position, 
This is a grinding, who wants it more in the trenches fight. Both of these guys are giving it 100%. And who's going to fight? I don't know who the winners of this fight going to be. What a fight. What wow. A fight. Wow. wow. I'm going to take my headset off. I'm giving them a standing ovation here. Back. Look at this. What is this, like a cartwheel kick? <laughs> Capoeira, I do believe. Now this is this set the stage for the whole fight, that dirty inside fight. Take me through this. It's beautiful. I mean, you can see both guys using their heads, leaning on each other, using that weight, and the single arm clinches. I must make that point. Most of the knees were thrown while a single arm clinch was held, which is totally legal. They do say it's one knee in the clinch. A single arm clinch doesn't cl count the same as a plum clinch. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, the judges have made their decision. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous draw. So ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause to Simeon and Richard, the mid Riffin. I said if you wanted entertainment, go no further. Richard, you leave nothing on the line. <laughs> you go it. at 110%. You and Paul Kelly, it's going to be explosive. Grant, put your seatbelt on. I cannot wait. Richard, <laughs> who do you want to say thank you to, apart from Grant, anybody else? <laughs> I'd like to thank all my teammates down at Trojans. Um, guys, um, I am training all over the place for this fight, and I'm just Got making sure I'm getting everything in there. So um, there's a few people like Kevin, um, Steve, they've they all been working hard with me, trying to help me get ready. Do you want to say anything to Paul Kelly? Paul Kelly, mate, listen, I know you that you don't think that I'm much of a fighter, but at the end of the day, mate, when I come into the ring, you're going to feel my power. Do you know what I mean? Just as simple as that. There's no ifs, no buts, no maybe. You're going to be in for a fight. That's it. Crazy fool. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, it's been awesome. Thank you. From the myth, from Granite Grant, from Dave O'Donnell. We'll see you next time on Cage, Cage Fighter. Fighter. Cage Fighter, the warrior, you know you're unbelievable.